Hello and welcome everybody, my name is Herbert and in this video we're going to be setting up a reverse proxy with Apache and we're going to be doing this with Flask but you can do this with any type of HTTP uh, server that is running an application so we're just going to be using Flask uh, but again you can use anything, you can use Node.js for example, this would also work for Node.js, uh, there's just a few things that you're going to have to keep in mind when you're actually running this but you know Keep in mind that this demo is really aimed at Flask uh, or UWSGI, so this would also work for like Django. If you're using UWSGI as the uh, server, then that would also be okay. But if you're doing this for Node.js, of course, you're going to have to do a little bit more research on how to set your IP addresses, uh, how to make sure that your IP address is listening on a local port, not on a public port, things like that. So uh, if you follow along with the tutorial, uh, you should see sort of the, the, the similarities between between the two, uh, Node.js will also have probably. I don't. I'm not really a JavaScript developer, but I imagine that Node.js would also have like a config file somewhere or anywhere uh, that you can actually define the IP address that the server needs to listen to. So. Just make sure that that's okay. So yeah, if you watch my previous video, that was also uh, about the the Watcher application. It was like a. Uh, it was like a Flask app that we created with uh, the, the, the ability to monitor services. We're going to be using that to put that behind a reverse proxy because we want to get that nice uh, secure connection with an SSL certifi certificate. So without further ado, let's go straight into it. So first of all, I have the first command already ready. So we're going to make sure that, that wa the watcher service is no longer running. Uh, and again, if you're doing this for like Node.js, then make sure that that application is no longer running before you actually go ahead and change the configuration. If it's only running on a local uh, on the local IP address, that's fine. Uh, just you know, keep in mind what the IP address is, uh, what the port is, excuse me. So we're going to be stopping this service. So we, we're going to make sure that this the watcher service is no longer running. And then also what we're going to be doing is make sure that that uh, UWSGI is no longer running. And that should give us this value here. So we're going to be doing PS minus EF, we're going to be looking at what's running. And then uh, we're going to be grabbing UWSGI and then if anything else returns than the actual grep command that we executed, uh, then that would show up here. But we see that the only thing that's really running at the time that of running this was the grep command, and that is to be expected because, you know, this is going to be evaluated at the same time, and then that grep command is going to be in your uh, tasks list. First of all, we're going to go into our ini file. So if you watched the previous video, you know that we created an ini file for UWSGI. So that was in the app.ini. So let's go ahead and uh, sudo vim that. And you can see over here that we are running on uh, 0000. zero, zero, zero. We're going to want to remove that and we're going to run this on the local host. So 0 .0 0.0.1 and port 80 is fine. All the rest should be fine as well. So just make sure that, you know, that IP address has been changed. We'll write and quit that. And once that is done, uh, we can actually start doing uh, a few more other things. So uh, we need to make sure that we have Apache 2 installed, of course. Uh, we're going to be installing Apache 2 with sudo apt install Apache 2. Uh, that's going to be installing a few things here. There we go. And before we actually go ahead and request the certificates and all, just make sure that... Um, this is all fine. I guess I'll need to reboot the system at one time, but that's this is not the moment for it. So we're going to be doing uh, sudo systemctl stop Apache 2 because we want that Apache 2 service to not be running uh, because we're going to need that port 80. If you watched another video that I just uh, released last week, I went over how to actually request these certificates and uh, you need to make sure that nothing is running on the port 80 because certbot, which is the tool that we're just going to be installing in a moment here, also is going to be um, running on that port 80 when it requests your certificates. So we're going to be doing also uh, sudo apt install certbot. Uh, and it is already installed. So uh, apparently I already installed this or it is pre-installed on Ubuntu machines. Anyway, we need that cert bot because we want to uh, request our certificates here. So 
Uh, we're going to be doing this. So sudo certbot cert only. And this is not the correct URL here. I'm going to go over this in just a minute here. So that was the domain name here. You can see that we're just requesting the cert only. So we don't want to have the, we don't want that automatic certificate config for Apache. We just want the certificates only. At least that's how I like to work uh, because that's just how I'm used to it because uh, professionally we don't really use Let's Encrypt for this. We would use different certificate authorities but anyway so okay the preferred challenges is going to be http and then the domain name is going to be this one and that should work if all goes well that should not give us an issue there we go we have our certificates so the certificate is saved over here and the key is saved over here all right so let's go down a little bit I actually created a written tutorial for this as well. It's uh, I'll link it in the video description, but if I'm looking at the other monitor, I'm just looking at how I did it before because I don't want to make any mistakes. If you're a content creator, you know how it is. You just not follow any, if you don't follow any scripts, then things just tend to mess up at some point. So we want to make sure that all the mods are installed for Apache. So Apache has a few mods. Uh, there's mods for proxy, there's mods for SSL, and we also have a HTTP proxy mod. Uh, so there's a bunch of mods here that we're going to be installing. So we're going to be doing sudo a2en mod and then proxy uh, proxy HTTP and then SSL. These are the uh, three mods that we're going to be enabling. There we go. And now it says that we have to restart Apache 2, but we're, we don't have to restart it because it wasn't running. We just remember in the beginning of the video, we shut it down. So next up, what we want to do by default, when, uh, when we start Apache, I, I can actually just show you this real quick. Now we need to sudo, uh, sudo that. There we go. And if I go to well, this is not the correct uh, one because this is already a pre-configured one. So if I would go to the dash watcher.herbertech.com, we would get this Apache 2 default page and we don't want that. You know, we don't want that to be served at all. Now, this is going to be, of course, this is on port 80. We're going to be uh, disabling port 80 for our specific server. And we're also going to be making sure that nobody who has the IP address can surf to this web page. So that the, the thing that we need to do for that is we just need to remove like the default uh, Apache config. So first of all, let's stop Apache 2. And now let's remove that uh, default, the sort of 000 default.config. We're going to remove that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to be creating a new config file. And the best way to go about this is just name this. That's at least how I learned it. And that will be the dash watcher.hybertech.com.conf. And that will be a config file that you place under the Etsy Apache 2 sites available. And then it's actually in the same directory where we removed that default config. Uh, we're going to be creating our own config file in here. And let's quickly I already did a lot of uh, preparation here. So there's a lot of stuff that we're just going to go uh, and we're just going to copy. So for server name, of course, this isn't correct anymore. This should be the dash watcher. And then over here, uh, the dash watcher and this one as well, the dash watcher. So, okay. So let's go over this real quick. So the server name, it should be the watcher harbortech.com or whatever your domain name is and then a proxy reserve host would be on proxy pass is going to be the, the proxy pass and proxy pass reserve are going to be the IP address and the port where your uh, application is hosted SSL engine should be on we have our certificate file here and this should also be corrected because this is going to be the dash or watcher and this as well is going to be uh, the dash watcher .com. and these certificates they should all be in default locations so this is fine so we have the key file which is our private key and you can see that 
over here, priv key, and then the certificate file is going to be the full chain.pem. Virtual hosts at uh, port 80. That means anything at port 80. That server name is going to be also the same, but we're going to be redirecting this to HTTPS because we don't want to serve HTTP. We want to make sure that everything is just redirected to HTTPS so that nobody's looking at our web page through HTTP. We want everybody to watch through HTTPS. So let's write and quit this. And now we should just do this. So sudo a to e n site. And then we'll just copy uh, this over here. So the config file. And, and now we'll have to do a reload. So we'll do systemctl reload Apache 2. Well, it's not active, of course. Uh, so we'll just have to start it. So we'll do systemctl start Apache 2. And now when we go back into our browser here and we refresh this, uh, it's temporarily unavailable. Let's see if, uh, I guess we'll just need to do the reload part again. And then that should work. Let's see what we did wrong here. There must be something that's not fully okay. Oh, I know what it is. Of course, we need to start the service that's running behind it because you know it, it does if it's not running it needs to be uh, started so we'll do systemctl start the watcher and now when we refresh there we go that should be it okay so that was just a problem <laughs> some live troubleshooting here so i was already kind of panicking because i really prepared this very well uh, to make sure that everything was okay but the only problem was of course that the uh, the backend wasn't running so we need to make sure of course that when you're serving something in in apache 2 if you're running this uh, if you're running apache 2 as a reverse proxy of course, you need to make sure that when that reverse proxy is redirecting the traffic to a site, you need to make sure that that site is, of course, running. So that was basically the issue here. Okay, so that was kind of it, guys. If you enjoyed this video, uh, hit that like button. If you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.